next electron configuration um, for an for an atom. When you talk about electron configuration, basically um, we are trying to give location to electrons for an atom. What area or in which level or sub level electrons are going to be located? And when we don't say anything about like excited level uh, or excited state, we are talking about the lowest energy level or the most stable um, atom where electrons are in the lowest possible um, energy of the, um, of the orbital. There are some limitation as I had a very small, uh, you know, drawing before, you have, you have the nucleus and then you have your uh, levels, energy levels. How many electrons is going to go to level one? How many electrons is going to go to level two? And how many would go in level three? That's one thing. In each level, we do have sublevels. The sublevels, they are S, P, D, F. There are more sublevels, but we only deal with these four sublevels at this point. There are some limitations about sublevels also. Level one has only sublevel S. Level two has a sublevel S and a sublevel P. Level three, <coughs> thank you, sorry. Uh, level three has S, P, and D. Now, when it comes to different levels, they have different energy. The closer, in general, the closer the level to the nucleus, the lower the energy. This is general. But when it comes to sub-level, in the sub-level also, the S orbital in each level is going to have less energy than P orbital. P orbital would have less energy than the D orbital. Not every level has all of these sublevels. Level one has only one S, level two has S and P, level three has S, P, and D, level four has S, P, D, and F, and so on. So the, um, this pattern of the levels, like level four would have higher energy than level three, it doesn't, it doesn't apply all the time. Uh, for a larger atoms, uh, they, uh, we see some like exceptions. Uh, even though this diagram is not on scale, but it shows that uh, level uh, sublevel 3D has lower energy than uh, 4P. So when you are writing electron configuration, you give electrons to 3D before to 4P. So, those are some points you have to uh, you have to remember. Second, each orbital can take only two electrons. So for level one, when we have only uh, one s, you get only two electrons, and they are going to be drawn in opposite spin. So if it's an arrow up or down, that means that it's going to spin clockwise or counterclockwise. It's a different spin direction. After one S is filled up, because it has the lowest energy and based on off ball principle, the orbitals with lower energy is going to fill up first, then it will go to two S, one electron, two electron, and it stops there. No more electron can go to 2s because it's occupied. Then it would go to the uh, it would go to 2p. Now, if you look, 2p sublevel has three orbitals. 2p sublevel has three orbitals. Uh, specifically, can call them like 2px, 2py, 2pz. We don't have to differentiate at this level, but we have a 2px, y, and z they all have same energy level. So the first electron, uh, the, basically the fifth electron, because the first two goes to 1s, second two goes to 2s. Now, the electron five would go to the first p orbital, 
electron six would go to the second p orbital. And it makes sense because these two are same energy level. So it doesn't have to come in and tolerate the other electron if it can go with the same energy, can go to the orbital two of the p. Then three, next electron would go to the p orbital three. Now, when, if you bring, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if you bring electron number eight, as a choice to go to 2p or 3s. Because 2p has lower energy than 3s, would go to 2p and is going to start pairing up. The, the, this pattern that if you have same energy orbitals and same energy orbitals, they start filling up singly first. And then uh, continue pairing up. That is known as the Hans rule also. So we have off ball principle and we have Hans rule. Those are the rules that are limit us how to put the electrons in different energy level or in the sub level. So we have next electron would go to the 2PY and pair up. Next one also pairs up. Now it stops here. We cannot put more electron into 2p orbital. Now, if you had you were dealing with the element like sodium that has 11 electron, where would the next electron go? It would go to 3s. It's not going to go to 3p because 3s has less energy than 3p. For magnesium, you have 12 electrons. Then electron number 12 would also go to uh, 3s. Now, if you were dealing with aluminum with 13 electrons, next electron would go to 3p, and then 14 and 15, 16 would go here. So um, the, the energy level is shown in this uh, diagram is going to determine which sub-level is going to fill up first. Now, after the 3p is filled up, then is not going to go to 3D because 4S has lower energy than, uh, than the 3D. So um, like potassium is going to have the 4S1, it would go to the 4S before going to uh, 3D, even though you have potassium in level four of the periodic table, um, but 3D is not going to be filled up before 4S because 3D based on the shape of the orbital has more energy than the four S orbital. So in each level, you have sublevels, limited number of sublevels. For level one, you have one sublevel, level two, you have two sublevels, level three, you have three sublevels, level four, you have four sublevels. The energy within each level. For S is less than P, P is less than D, D is less than F. When it comes to the lower level, like before level three, level one has always lower energy than level two, level two has lower energy than the level three. But when, it get, when you get to the 3D, 3D as exception has more energy than the 4S. So 4S is going to fill up before 3D. Okay, I have kind of condensed, I want to make sure that you have all of these writings, I mean, because is the lecture outline, uh, but you also have more information in the book and in the unit PowerPoints. Uh, but this is basically a summary and this is what exact what is basic before you can uh, talk about electron configuration, write electron configuration, or you would, uh, you know, uh, look at the exceptions and some of the uh, definitions. So electrons in successive uh, elements and the periodic table tend to fill the low energy orbitals first. When you talk about electron configuration is basically arrangement of the electrons in orbitals of an atom. Um, the Filling order is based on the observed experimental result and has been supported by theoretical calculation. When you are getting to higher level, you, you saw that 3D has less energy than 4S or 
5p has lower energy than uh, 4d. Uh, and uh, so you have to pay attention to that pattern, which one comes next. There is a diagram that I'm going to show you that shows which orbital is going to fill up first also. So as the, uh, the, the level increases, so you go from level one to two to three, the, the diameter is going to increase of the atom and then for, for that level, and it takes more sublevels. That's very obvious. The attraction between positive and negative charge or, or electrostatic attraction is inversely proportional to distance. You know that a positive charge and negative charge, the closer they are together, they are going to be stronger attraction. So um, does it, what it means, uh, the, the levels that they are further away from the nucleus, like level four here, N equals four, is going to be less attracted to this nucleus. And if it's less attracted for electron to be here, is not going to be very stable because it's not attracted as strongly to the nucleus. As a result, level four is going to have higher energy for electron to stay in level four is going to have higher energy than if it was in level three or level two or level one. So the energy is going to increase. And then for the sublevel, we already talked, S has lower energy than P, P has lower energy than D for each sublevel. The, this, the fact that the attraction is less for higher level is also known as a shielding effect because this level four is shielded by three layers of electrons that they are in between nucleus and the last energy level. So it's known as also as the shielding effect. N, when you are writing electron configuration, N represents the energy level. The letter, okay, so energy level. So you have, let's say you have a 2P3. This is N. That shows the energy level. It comes before the name of the sublevel. The letter that you have here, that shows the sublevel. And the exponent, it means how many electron is in this sublevel. So there, in this case, you have three electron in sublevel 2p. So these electrons, are, they are actually in level two. They are in the pure orbitals of level two. So this superscript is actually showing the number of electrons. For example, 2p4, okay? Uh, 2p4 indicates four electrons in the p subshell, which is the L value one. L value shows the subshell. When L is zero, that's S orbital. L equals one, that's P orbital. I have it in the presentation, but I just want to make sure that you see it a couple of times. If L is two, that's for D orbitals. If L is three, that's for F orbitals. So these are subshells which is determined by the, um, these L values. There are always limitation for the L values. Um, the um, N can start from one and it can go up and it's a whole number. So it would be one, two, three, four. L can start from zero, but it's going to stop at N minus one. So if level one has only sub-level L zero, and that is the S. You may have to like kind of rewind some of these and just get to the, uh, you know, to know about the, to repeat for yourself if, if I'm too fast, if I'm explaining this too fast. The good thing you can rewind it. Okay, notation for 3D8. This is a level three, okay, D subshell. And the value for L is two. That's what I have here. For value L is two, that's D subshell. And the value for N is three. For D5, 
for 4d5, uh, the n is 4, l is 2, and number of electron is 5. 5 electron in uh, d orbital of level 4. 3p4, four, level 4, n is 4. I'm sorry, level 3, n is 3. You have sublevel P, that is L equals 1, and four electrons, and four electrons. Okay, I have two other diagrams here. Again, this diagram up here, it shows the, uh, the diagram, um, it shows the energy level. For orbital diagram, it shows all the orbitals uh, for each sublevel. This diagram here, it only shows the sublevels. It doesn't separate the orbitals. But we know that a 2p sublevel is going to have three orbitals. And the maximum number of electrons that can go to 2p is going to be six because it has three orbitals. And each orbital can take only two electrons. But for 3D, it can go up to 10. And the reason it can go up to 10 is because um, the reason it can go up to 10 for 3D, because we have five D orbitals and each one takes two. And that is a five times two equals 10 electrons that can go to 3D. So 3D 10 is the maximum. You cannot have 3D 11 because only five orbitals, and with the five orbitals, you get uh, only 10 electrons, no more than 10 electrons. So it's easy to draw this diagram, but it's very, very helpful. So you don't have to memorize if 3D comes before 4S, because you follow this, you are going to follow this diagram. Okay? And what it shows, is that uh, what it shows is that uh, is um, the arrow sign. So the arrow goes down. So you fill the one S first, then you go back up and it comes down. Then you fill up two S. After that, you go back up and then come diagonally down. After the two S is going to be two P, then after two P would be three S. Now after three S, what comes is, 3p, after 3p is going to be 4s. And after 4s, automatically, if you follow this pattern, it goes to 3d, 4p, and then 5s, and then like that, okay? Like that. Okay, so we have these. And then five, I'm sorry, after the 6s, it would be 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s. You see, it's not easy to remember this, but it is very easy to follow this procedure. How are you going to draw this diagram? You start from the top and you say 1s, okay? This is 1s. For level two, what do you have? You have a 2s and 2p. For level three, what you have? You have 3s, 3p, and 3d. For level four, what you have is a 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. Level five, 5s, 5p, 5d, and 5f, 6s. I'm just showing you how to draw it, okay? Then you take your uh, pen and you are going to draw the, the arrows diagonally. 1s first, then you go back up and then come down diagonally 2s, then you go back up 2p and 3s, then it would be 3p, 4s, after 4s is going to be 3d, 4p, and then 5s. That's how you, what you follow, okay, to, to know which sub level should fill up first. Limitation, highest number of electrons in 2s is two, for P is six, for D is 10, and F is 14. This, is, this has to do with the number of 
orbitals that you have in subshell. For every s orbital, you only get two electrons. For every d orbital, you get only up to 10 electrons. Okay. okay. So uh, elements in row, row two began to fill two s and then two p orbitals and so on. Notice through that the d and f subshells get this uh, as like n minus one and n minus two respectively. So you could see that when you have like a uh, for six s, then it would be four uh, f. Or if you have 6s and then you have like a 5d. Just follow this diagram. Just know that there is exception. It's not always level by level. Okay. This periodic table is, uh, and the next one is going to show the, this one shows the blocks. This area of the periodic table, the blue color, this one is S block, okay? This uh, orange to red color, the pink color, basically this is tan color, is P block. So if you have an element like bromine, if you write electron configuration, you're going to end up with last electron would go to P orbital, that's what it means. If you have the element in the S block, when you write electron configuration, last electron would go to would go to s orbital. I have an electron configuration here, and this is for chlorine. Last electron went to p orbital, so I know chlorine must be in this area, and I look find it right here. You have chlorine; it belongs to p block. If you have the element in this location with the yellow color, it's called a D block. That means if you have element in this location, when you write electron configuration, last electron would go to D orbital. And same thing for inner transition. This is called F block. So if you take any of these elements and you write electron configuration, uh, then the last electron would go to F orbital. So when you are writing electron configuration or assigning electron configuration, you need the previous diagram that is known as the alpha principle because orbitals of the subshells is going to be filled up based on energy level. When it comes to like p orbitals that you have three p orbitals, uh, px, py, and a pz, first is going to be singly occupied, then you can pair them up. That is known as the Hans rule. Uh, okay. So there is also another principle is known as Pauli exclusion. This is you cannot have two electrons with the same quantum number, or it says that uh, no two electrons can share same set of quantum quantum numbers. Means that if they are in the same orbital, like if you have for hydrogen, you have a one s orbital, and you have uh, um, one electron will go like this. But this is for hydrogen. For helium, you have one s orbital because it's a level one. You have two electrons for that is going to be one electron up, the other electron must go down because it's the same orbital, same energy level. So N is the same, N is one, uh, L is one, zero. So these two quantum numbers are the same. The orientation is, or the shape of the orbital is going to be a spherical shape. So the spin number has to be different. So if everything is the same, at least, they, if they're in the same orbital, they must spin in opposite direction. So that is known as Pauli exclusion principle. For the Hans rule, is this is the Hans rule. So for the Hans rule, um, you have to make sure that each one occupies singly before you can fill up and pair them 
啊。The total number of the electrons that you are using cannot be more than the electrons provided for the atom or if it's ion, okay? So you have to get to the, um, to make sure that you have the, you stop at one point. If you have chlorine atom, like in this case, chlorine has 17 electron only, you have to stop. You cannot put more than five electrons in the pure, three p orbital, because if you put six, it's going to be 18 and you don't have 18 electrons. If you have an element that has 18 electrons, then you must use the 3p6. So you have to stop at one point, okay? So what is the electron configuration for potassium? It has 19 electrons. For potassium with 19 electrons, I'm going to start with one S first, I'm going to put two electrons in one S. This is based on the alpha principle. Then it goes to two S, with two electrons, the superscript shows the number of electrons. After 2s comes 2p, six electrons would go to 2p. After 2p comes 3s, 3s with two electrons. So after 3s, it comes 3p. If you go to the previous slide, you can actually see what comes next. 3p, and that is six electrons. Two, four, 10, 12, 18. Potassium has 19 electrons. So I have to put the next electron also. And after 3P, it comes 4S. It doesn't come 3D, it comes 4S. We already talked about it. And it's going to be one electron in there. So that's for potassium, electron configuration of potassium. Electron configuration for magnesium. How many electrons do we have? Because if we don't know number of electrons, we cannot write electron configuration. 12 electrons. With the 12 electrons, I'm going to start with 1s2, 2s2, 2p, oops, 2p6, and 3s2. And it stops there. This is an S block. So where can I find magnesium? Magnesium is an S block, it's in level three. I go up here, level one, two, three, magnesium. Is it going to be S block? One of these two is going to be magnesium. And because it has 12 electron is going to be right here because this is a S2, this is a S1. So this is a S2. This group ends with S2, okay? So magnesium is going to, electron configuration for magnesium is going to end with S2. So to locate the, the elements in the periodic table using electron configuration. I look at the last energy level that has electrons. So the highest number that I have here is three. So I'm looking for level three. These numbers here, it shows the level. So it's going to be in here, somewhere in this level. Then I look at the total number of electrons that I have in level three, and that's just three. I'm sorry, two. This is the S block. So that means it's going to be in group two, S block, level three, then I locate the magnesium. Let's look at potassium. Potassium is in level four because the last electron goes to level four. If your electron configuration is correct, then it's going to give you actual location. So you have a level four, and this is the S block because the last electron goes to the S orbital. There's only one electron in the S, so it's going to be group one or only one electron in the last energy level. So in level four, you have only one, one electron. So it's going to be level one, I'm sorry, group one and level four, and that's where the potassium is. So I can actually locate that. Potassium with uh, four S1 as the last electron that you have for potassium is going to be in level four, and group one, and the intersection of that is right there. So I can locate based on electron configuration where the, the element is located. Electron spin, you talked about the electron spin. It has to be, if it's in the same 
electrons in the same orbital, they must have opposite, um, opposite spin. So if I have, let's say, if I have uh, element like, um, Sodium, okay. Um, sodium sodium has eleven electrons. With eleven electrons, it's going to be one s. So, in order to find out if it's diamagnetic or paramagnetic, I have to write orbital diagram. So, I have to show each electron in the orbital. Two electrons would go to 1s. Uh, then it's 2s. Two electrons go to 2s. Then I have the 2p. So these are the 2p. And I have three orbitals. Okay, Three orbitals. Uh, six electrons would go. I know I have 11 electrons. So I knew that I have to fill up the 3p. Otherwise, I have to go 1, 1, 1, and then pair up. Then I have the... 3s. One electron goes to 3s. Now, if I have one orbital that is unpaired, sodium is going to be paramagnetic. Okay? Sodium is going to be paramagnetic. Now, if I look at the electron configuration for magnesium, I have 12 electron. 1s takes two electron, 2s takes two electron, and 2p is going to take six electron I already, uh, and then when it comes to 3s you get two electrons because you have 12 so this is going to be paramagnetic because you have unpaired electrons that's for sodium but for uh, for magnesium magnesium is paired up okay because it's paired up is going to go to diamagnetic because everything is paired up, all electron pairs. So we have electron pairs. These are pairs and they are going to cancel each other's effect because what effect is the magnetic field effect? Because electron is charged when it's spinning clockwise or counterclockwise is going to generate a uh, magnetic field. And with the magnetic field, if it's not canceled, then you get paramagnetic or some magnetic property. But some elements, if the electron configuration shows only paired electron, is going to be diamagnetic. That means doesn't have electron um, magnetic property. Ferromagnetic, you have like few of the elements and some alloys. You have like three of them, iron, cobalt, and nickel, and some alloys that they have many um, same direction um, electrons and the, the magnetic property is going to add up and it makes it like ferromagnetic. That means that like very magnetic property. Okay. Electron configuration for ions. We already talked about shielding effect prior in the prior slides. We talked about the shielding effect. We talked about the L equals zero, that is S orbital. L equals one is P orbital and L equals two, that is a um, D orbital. And N shows the principle. Now, when we talk about ion electron configuration is just like element electron configuration or atom electron configuration with exceptions that ion they have charge. If it's a positively charged, that means that electron has been removed. If it's negative charge, that means electron have been added. So when we are writing electron configuration for ion, first we have to find the total number of electron for that ion. Let's say we have chlorine, uh, with the 17 electron, we know this from periodic table, but if we say chloride ion, chloride, that means has gained one electron because electron brings negative charge. So chloride ion in, in general is going, in total is going to have 18 electron. That is a 17 plus one electron. 
This is a 17 plus one electron because 17 comes from chlorine, one comes from the charge of negative one. When you have sulfur with two minus, this is 18 electrons, but that 18 electron is coming from 16 plus two electrons, okay? 16 electron is for sulfur because atomic number for sulfur is 16. The two electron comes from, the two electron comes from the charge. That means sulfur has gained two electron, became negatively charged ion or anion, and the total number of electron now is going to be 18. After that, when you have total number of electrons, then the, the is going to be uh, easy to write electron configuration because we had some practices already. Now, for chloride ion with 18 electrons, it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. 3p6 is very stable situation because it's... Uh, it's like a noble gases. If you have like 2s2, 3p6, that's eight valence electron. If any element ends up with n, s2, n, p6, okay, no d, nothing else, n, s2, n, p6, this is representation for noble gases. Noble gases, they are very stable. So chlorine has gained one electron to become like a noble gas. This noble gas, like if you look for element argon, argon has 18 electron. Argon has, since it has 18 electron, okay? Chloride has 18 electron. These two are known as isoelectric. We have it here, isoelectric. That means same number of electrons. We cannot have isoprotic because if it's different number of, or same number of protons, it has to be same element. But we could have different species that they have, um, they have same number of electrons. So if I have argon, I have sulfide with two electrons, and I have chloride with one electron, or I have potassium with one plus charge, or if I have calcium with two plus charge, they all have 18 electrons, okay? All have 18 electrons. And if they all have 18 electrons, they are isoelectric, means they all have same number of electrons. That's what it means. So when you have when you are writing electron configuration for calcium with two plus charge, what would you do? Uh, for the um, calcium with two plus charge, you are going to or aluminum with two plus charge or magnesium with two plus charge, how would you write electron configuration for these ions? Electron configuration for aluminum with three plus charge. How many electrons do I have? I look at the periodic table, find aluminum here. Aluminum has 13 electrons, okay? Aluminum has 13 electrons. What is aluminum three plus? is going to be 10 electrons, okay? 10 electrons, and that is a 13 minus three electrons. Because positive charges needs, you need to subtract the number of electrons. Three positive charge, subtract three. So we have 10 electrons, then you write, so you don't forget, you have 10 electrons. If you have 10 electrons, it's going to give you one S2, two S2, and two P6, okay? This is like, is not neon, but is like neon, okay? Because neon also has 10 electrons. Now, magnesium with two plus charge has 10 electrons. And why is 10 electron? Because you have 12 minus two electrons. Magnesium has 12 electrons. Magnesium two plus has 10 electrons. So it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 6. This is also like neon. And then we have s minus 2. I already have the that have it in the other slide, but I'm going to write it again. This is 18 electrons. Basically, is a 16 plus 2 electrons. The sulfur has 16 electrons. It's right here. 
sulfur under oxygen has only 16 electrons. Plus two electrons for the sulfide is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. This is like argon because argon has three. So when ions form, especially like metals or non-metals, when they gain or lose electron, they are achieving electron configuration like a noble gas. So they make it stable. Noble gases, they are very stable. That's why every element in the periodic table wants to be like a noble gas by gaining electron, by sharing electron, or by losing electron. Okay, that is the end of the presentation. Let's see.